Hello everybody, my name is Sven Hogdahl and I want to talk to you today about my research on George Whitfield. Whitfield was known as the Prince of Preachers during the Great Awakening. Uh, he was born in 1714, died in 1770, and he made around seven trips to the colonies to share the gospel. And so I want to talk to you about how he did that and how he was a larger than life person. Mainly, I want to focus on three things. One, his use of commerce, two, his relationship with Benjamin Franklin, and three, his uh, relationship to th the slave world. Uh, so when I think of George Whitfield, a couple of scripture verses came to mind. Uh, one of them is Matthew ten sixteen that says, Behold, I am sending you out as sheep among wolves, so be wise as serpents and innocent as doves. As we look at George Whitfield and commerce, we'll probably see that play out a little bit. Not only that, but uh, 1 Corinthians 9, 21, the second part of that verse and through 23, it says, I have become all things to all people, that by all means I might save some. I do it all for the sake of the gospel, that I might share with them its blessing. So uh, George Whitfield had kind of an interesting relationship with commerce. Unlike the Wesleys, who kind of wanted to shy away from using advertising and self-promotion, Whitfield was all about it. He um, employed any means necessary, um, and to mainly to share the gospel, and mainly for uh, his charitable purpose. One of those charitable purposes was to build an orphanage in Savannah, Georgia, called Bethsaida. And um, George grew up with a uh, family business background, so he was kind of familiar with the business world and marketing and merchandising and getting himself out there. And so what was pretty cool is that he employed uh, advertising for his revivals, uh, promotion to get more people to come out and to hear about him. Uh, one of the things that uh, he, he did is he wrote and published his journals. Uh, Benjamin Franklin, actually, I'll talk about in a second, ended up publishing quite a few of George Whitfield's uh, works. But um, he did that mainly to compete with the ideas that were out there for people's hearts, some of the more mainline Anglican churches and things like that. And so he did this to fundraise as well. He was really careful uh, to keep a good reputation. I learned he cared a lot about that because uh, by putting himself out there, he was open to criticism and some were criticizing that he was using his funds in a shady way. But Whitfield was able to uh, squash those uh, criticisms through uh, publishing his records and things like that. And Franklin was really good at helping him with that. So anyway, through this process, Whitfield be basically ended up with celebrity status in the new world. And it allowed him to reach more people. He became one of the most famous people in the United States because of his use of commerce and uh, becoming all things to all men in order to win some. In order for Whitfield to become all things to all men, he had this mutually beneficial relationship with Benjamin Franklin. Uh, Franklin was a publisher at, in Pennsylvania at the time, Philadelphia, and so Whitfield was able to use the publishing of Franklin to get his name out there. And of course, Franklin was able to make a profit uh, in publishing all of uh, Whitfield's works. And uh, like I said earlier, Franklin actually played a strong role in making sure that Whitfield had a good reputation. And they really had a, a fond affection for one another, even though they did not agree on theological matters. Um, Franklin really seemed to have actually loved Whitfield in his own way, and Franklin was quite fascinated by Whitfield, and he was he wanted to go see him for his himself. In fact, in fact, when Franklin went to first see him, he was shocked by Whitfield's booming voice. He believed that Whitfield could actually reach around thirty thousand people in Philadelphia, which is pretty incredible. But uh, Franklin also never thought that he'd want to give to Whitfield's cause. But uh, this quote is pretty cool because uh, Franklin ended up going to a meeting and he said, I had in my pocket a handful of copper money, three or four silver dollars and five pistols of gold. As he proceeded, I began to soften and concluded to give the coppers. Another stroke of his oratory made me ashamed of that 
and determined me to give the silver. And he finally so admirably, and he finished, excuse me, so admir um, admirably that I emptied my pocket wholly into the collector's dish, gold and all. So we know that Whitfield had a huge influence even on a smart guy like Benjamin Franklin. When it comes to slavery, George Whitfield is a little bit of a mixed bag. He was obviously, according to his writings, vehemently against the mistreatment of slaves in the South uh, by their masters. He witnessed some awful stuff and was willing to write about it and even say that God was going to judge the, the South. In fact, he had already judged the South uh, because of the, this practice. And so what's interesting about Whitfield is that he, he really cared about the education of everyone, including the slave population and the slave child. He believed that white children and black children were equal in that regard and that they each needed the gospel. And so Whitfield was anti-mistreatment of slavery. However, there's a little bit of controversy with Whitfield because he actually fought to keep want to get slavery to be legal in Georgia so that he could use slave labor to build his orphanage. And so this is where things get a little bit controversial with Whitfield. But with regards to slavery, we don't know for sure what where Whitfield's heart was with everything. I don't know if we'll ever know. We just know for sure the results of his interactions with the slave population. One, he treated his slaves really well and probably got them out of situations that were much worse. Two, he cared a lot about the education of slaves. And if you know anything about the slave South, many owners did not want their slaves educated at all. And three, uh, he cared about their souls deeply uh, and he wanted to share the love of Christ uh, with the slave population.